I was a little confused. I thought the picture on the left, the right bulbs, the current would be split between the two. The current. The right, all the current would go through just the one. That is absolutely true. The current would be split between the two. Maybe we should just look at what happens if you set up something like that because I can. I can set up two light bulbs and one battery. I think since I put the high voltage side on the right, I'll put the high voltage side on the right here. And I'm going to put this switch in. Okay, so the right hand side of this light bulb is connected by this wire all the way over to the right hand side of this one. The left hand side of this one is connected by this wire all the way over to the left hand side of that one. In fact, maybe I'll do one other thing. I'm going to break this junction for a second because I am going to remove the light bulb by just opening the switch. So right now I'm going to close the switch. So there's one switch open right here near the battery and that's stopping anything from flowing. So what happens if I close this? Well the negative side will start pushing electrons out and both lights light up. What's going on here? What's going on with, how do these electrons, these, the motion of these, look different than the motion of those. These are going faster. What does going faster mean? Higher current, larger current. In fact, they're going twice as fast as those. This current right here splits into two pieces, just like you said. It's exactly right. Splits into two pieces. What happens if I open this one? So this, is, this one's getting half of that current, the other one's getting the other half. What happens if I open that? Now what happens to the current here compared to the current there? Now they're the same. This current is the same as it was. This one's gone down to zero. This upper one has gone down to zero, not, not lit up. This is the only bulb that's lit. So, so how do you, how do you, we can, we can analyze this just the way we did, but how, how would you talk about that? One way, thing I might say is that the battery is tr trying to push electrons through here, then it can. What if it also is trying to push them through there, then it can do that too. In fact, it's just as easy to push them through here as to push them through there. So when this is connected, then it pushes electrons through both of them, and so it throws electrons out twice as fast. The battery will wear out twice as fast if I hook up more things in parallel. So that, this, the reason I said parallel is, is fairly important is that your house is wired in parallel. All the electrical sockets are wired in parallel to all the other electrical sockets. Can you think of why that, why, why you might do that? Why, why not put them all in series? What happened if I unscrewed one of them? If a light bulb went out and they were all in series, what would happen to the rest of your house? It would all go dark. You'd have to hunt around for the light bulb that went out, try to replace it in the dark, until another one went out, and then it would all go out again. Your house is wired in parallel so that if you remove something, everything else still works just fine because the power is connected to each of them. You have 110 volts or whatever, 120, 115, and they're all connected to that in parallel. Yeah. But it seems it doesn't, ma uh, it doesn't match our pattern of the, the equation we were using, I1 uh, plus I2 equals I0. <coughs> well, what is I1 plus I2 right now? Uh, I total is equal to what? 
It totally is the, the total current flowing through the whole system and I1 is the bottom one and I2 is the is the current flowing to the upper part. Okay, so I2 is the current to the upper part. What is I2 right now? I2 right now is zero. Zero. So does I1 equal I total plus I2? The I, I1 equals, equals I total right now. What if I added I2 onto that? Is that still true? It would be half, like each part would be, would only have the hold up, half of the current you used to have. If I say I total equals I1 plus I2, and I2 is 0, does I total still equal I1 plus I2? It, I total changed. Absolutely. I total changed. It's different in this circuit than it is in that circuit. I total, or at least I through the battery, is different because the battery now has two things that it's trying to power. This is the same as your house. The more things you plug in, the more current uh, PGD supplies to you. So the total current supplied, or the total power supplied to your house, gets bigger and bigger as you plug in more things and operate more pieces of equipment. Because they're all in parallel, just like this. Yeah? So, um just above where you were writing the power equation, it's um, you got the I one circuit element equals I another element. Is that that only applies to this series connection, or does that apply when they're in parallel? Because you have that must equal double arrow. This I one I for one circuit element equals I for the other is only for a series connection. None of these are now connected in series. No one current absolutely has to be equal to another current. It turns out that this current is equal to this one. That's only because the resistors are the same. It doesn't have to equal because they're not connected one right after the other. Any other questions about what was going on here? Yeah. So you refer to the power of the battery as increasing? I mean, when you add another light bulb, the current going through it is doubled. The current going through it is doubled, but its voltage is the same because it's just a battery, so twice as much power. So the battery is putting out twice as much power. Each of these, uh, each of, because the current is twice, just like you said, and each of those light bulbs is putting out the, the same equal amounts of power as each other. So when there's two of them in the circuit, the, there's twice as much light and the battery puts out twice as much power. And so it's going to wear out twice as fast. Or PG&E will charge you twice as much. H however you want to look at it. There is a limit for the battery. Yeah, the battery, it turns out, we've been pretending that batteries don't have resistance, but charges have to flow through a battery. So no matter how well you build the battery, the battery will have a resistance. And so there is a limit. If you try to, how can I, how can I find the limit? Um, what happens if I put, what happens if I put a bare wire across the battery? A bare wire we think of as having a very small resistance. So what's the current going to be through that wire if there's a tiny little resistance? It'll be big. So we'll see what happens to the battery if the current gets too big. Well, they're making it, they're, they're moving these as fast as they can, but they can't move. The current is so high they can't show the electrons moving that fast. Because the resistance here is so tiny, there's a gigantic current, and in fact, the battery has a resistance. So now the resistance in the battery is, is causing thermal energy in the battery. You're heating up your battery. In fact, this shows it on fire. Is it just a limitation of the simulation that the current isn't flowing through the light bulb? It is the limitation of the simulation. There, are, there is current actually flowing through the light bulb, but they, this says it's less than 1% of normal. They had to. In order to show these things, they had to slow the thing down by more than a factor of 100. 
So while these things are still moving, they're a hundred times slower, or more than, maybe they're a thousand times slower than they were. I'm not sure how, how slow they are. But they're still, the battery is still trying to push current through those as best it can. We just can't see it very well. So, so here's something that's uh, at least slightly related to what I just showed you. It's not the same thing, but it's related to it. Here's two bulbs connected in series. Let me reconnect these in series. Or not. Two bulbs connected in series. Suppose a wire is connected across one of those bulbs. So this wire here, I put one end of the wire across, uh, at, I connect it down here to this wire. The other end of this bare wire I connect down there. After the wire is connected, which of the following statements must be true? What do you think? Talk about it all you want. Which has to be true? Not might be or could be, but you can say it absolutely must be true. Yeah. 